Hello again, friends. Mrs. Bajinski here with another Draw With Me video. So today, we're going to be drawing a very cool animal. We're gonna be drawing a flamingo. And this animal is very special and I'm excited to try it, draw it because it is one of my kindergartners, um, Jordan, her favorite, favorite, favorite animal. And she's very excited to draw it. So I decided that's what we do today. Go ahead and leave me a comment about what your favorite animal is and we'll draw that one next time. All right, so let's get started. All you'll need is a piece of paper and a pen, pencil, marker, crayon, whatever you've got at home. Anything will work, right? And what we're gonna do with our paper is we're gonna take it from hot dog style and we're gonna turn it so that it is hamburger style. And we're gonna write a sentence about a flamingo in just a little bit after we finished our drawing. So let's leave some space up at the top of our paper and we'll put our flamingo down here. So we're gonna start by drawing our flamingo's head, the top of it. We're gonna draw just a little N shape right there. That's the top of its head. It's gonna turn into almost a circle right here, right? Then we're gonna come down with a straight line this is the um, first part of our flamingo's beak. And flamingos are really cool because they use their beaks like shovels. They stick their heads in water and they scoot their little beaks around until they find food. So we've got the top of our beak there. Then we're gonna kind of curve down a little bit, just straight and then a little curve. Then we're gonna come back here and we're gonna draw the bottom of our flamingo's head. So continuing that circle, but not connecting it. So we're gonna do a U shape just like that. See, and then there's our flamingo's head. Then we're gonna do the rest of our flamingo's beak. And all we're gonna do is, is we're gonna draw another. We're gonna come down a little bit on our circle so our beak can be a little thicker. And we're gonna go down and then we're gonna curve our flamingo's beak like that. And my lines don't touch yet, so I'm just gonna extend this line a little bit until we connect it to make our flamingo's beak. All right, now we're gonna make our flamingo's neck. Now flamingos have really, really long necks. That's one of the things that makes them so cool. So we're gonna come up to the edge of this circle here and we're gonna make a backwards S shape. So we're gonna go down like this and around. So here's the start of our flamingo's neck, and this right here is gonna be the bottom of our flamingo's body. Now let's draw the other part of our flamingo's neck, the top part of it. We're gonna come to this part of our flamingo's circle, and I'm actually gonna bring it down a little bit because flamingos have nice thin necks. They're not super chunky. So we're gonna come here to the edge of this one, and we're gonna draw a little curved line down like that. And again, I taught you this in my sloth video. If you don't like how your line looks, just make it a little thicker, a little bit thicker. And then it looks like you did it on purpose, right? So we've got the rest of our flamingo's neck. Then we're gonna draw the first part of our flamingo's body, our flamingo's back here. And we're gonna draw just a bump right there like that. I'm actually gonna come back here and make my bump go down a little farther. There we go. Then we're gonna draw the bottom part of our flamingo's body. So we're gonna take this one and go almost all the way up, not touching, because we're gonna add that little M shape that Miss Bajinski likes for hairs, but it's actually gonna look like our little flamingo's tail. So we're gonna add a little tail to our flamingo's patootie, right? So we have our head, our beak, our body. Another one of the things that makes flamingos so special is their long, long legs. So let's add our flamingo's legs in here, right? So I'm gonna not come right in the middle. I'm gonna go a little bit over towards the front of my flamingo and I'm gonna make two lines as straight as you can going down like this. I'm not gonna go all the way down, but our flamingo's leg needs to be a little bit longer. And instead, we're gonna add two little bumps here. They kind of look like the flamingo's knees, but let me tell you a secret. Flamingo's knees are way up here. This part right here is actually the flamingo's ankle. Isn't that crazy? Then we're gonna go to this side of the bump and we're gonna continue our straight line down until our flamingo has nice long legs. There we go. 
So there's the first part of our first leg. We're gonna add some feet now to this first leg. Well, one foot to this leg. And what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna make two straight lines. Our first one, we're gonna come to this first line and we're gonna go up. Then the second one, we're gonna come to this one, maybe make it go down a little bit more, and we're gonna go down. So it looks almost like a triangle, right? If we connected this here, it would be a triangle. But instead of drawing a straight line, we're gonna draw two bumps. We're gonna go bump, bump. So now you can tell that our flamingo has webbed feet. Yes, flamingos have webbed feet. You know what's really cool? They use those webbed feet to help them get going before they take off when they're flying. They can actually use them to walk on water. Isn't that crazy? All right, now we need to make our flamingo's other leg. And we're going to make this one bent up because that's one of the really cool things that flamingos do is they bend one of their legs and stand on one foot. Can you stand on one foot? Can you do it for as long as a flamingo can? Mm, you're gonna have to try it. So let's draw our other foot. We're gonna come back towards the flamingo's patootie and we're gonna go out at an angle like that. Oops, sorry about that. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come here, two lines that are making up the leg, right? Then we need to add our flamingo's other ankle. We're gonna make another bump here that's our flamingo's ankle. Then we're gonna draw a straight line going over here, right like this, all the way into that. Same over here, all the way to that. Then we're gonna come to the other side of our foot so it looks like that leg's behind it. And we're gonna continue it just a little bit. Now our flamingo needs its other foot. So. Our foot's gonna be going down this time. So we're gonna extend this one line out a little bit and we're gonna make our first line angled out like that. And then we're gonna go to this bottom line here and make our second line angled out like that. So we have that triangle shape. Now we're gonna do our two bumps to show that our flamingo has webbed feet. There, there's our flamingo's other foot. And honestly, it looks like I made this leg a little bit too long. Do you think I should just rip this paper up and throw it in the garbage can? No, I should not because you know what? That leg might be a little long, but it just makes my flamingo special, doesn't it? Makes it perfect, unique. So if yours doesn't look exactly like this, maybe your leg's too short. You know what? That's fine. So that just means your flamingo is special. Now, let's add some details. We've got the body, we've got the legs. Let's add our details. So flamingos have really, really pretty beaks. It's one of the things that I like about them is their curved beak, but they also have some cool markings. So we're gonna take our drawing tool and we're gonna make kind of a C shape there. And we're just gonna color that in. Maybe you wanna save that for when you use your crayons later, but I'm gonna color it in with my marker now to give my flamingos beak that black tip. And then with our same pencil marker, whatever you've got, we're gonna draw a thin line as thin as you can going up and curved up. And now it looks like our flamingo has a happy little smile. I love it. Then I'm gonna come here and give my flamingo an eye. I'm gonna make a bigger circle like this. And then I'm gonna make a small, almost circle inside of it to look like a pupil. And maybe you want your flamingo to look super cute and you want it to be a girl. So maybe you want to add some eyelashes to her. I think I'm going to do that because I think that makes her look so cute. Then our flamingo is a bird. So of course she needs a wing. So we're going to come into our flamingo's body and they actually have pretty big wings. I mean, they'd have to, they're pretty big birds. So we're going to start with the top of our wing and we're just going to make a nice arched shape. So a nice big arched shape like that. And then for the bottom part of our wing, we're gonna add some bumps over here so it looks like feathers. But the first one is gonna be a little long. So we're gonna go down, bump, bump, and then we're gonna connect it with that last bump there. And now we have a wing. And you don't have to add these, but I think these extra details make a nice touch. We're gonna add just some little bumpy lines, little curves going in, just to look like feathers. And I think that that just adds a nice special touch. And you know what? I might come up here and add a few little bumps. So it looks like our flamingo has a cute little hairdo. I just think those are so precious. 
Well, there we have it. There's our drawing of a flamingo. Let's write a sentence to match. So, do you know what color flamingos usually are? Pink. Yes, flamingos are pink. Do you know why they're pink? When they're babies, they don't start off as pink. It's because of what they eat. They eat lots of shrimp and algae, and they even eat snails. And because of their food, because of their diet, their feathers turn pink. Now, because there are different types of flamingos in different parts of the world, they can actually be different colors. Some flamingos can be red, but today I think my flamingo is going to be pink. So I think my sentence will say, flamingos can be pink. How many words? One, two, three, four. Easy peasy, we can do that. I heard can and be and pink. Those are three kindergarten sight words. We know those. We can figure this out easy. First word is flamingos. Oh, that's a long word. Let's clap out the syllables in that. Flamingos. How many words or how many syllables? Three. Three syllables. That's quite a lot. So let's start off with our first sound. F. And that is a capital F, right? Because it's the beginning of a sentence. Capital F. Oh. And then it sounds like a uh, you, but it's actually an A. Fla, mm, N. Ing. Oh my goodness. Is that, spe is that the special ing of king? Ing, ing. I-N-G spells ing like king. Bow to the king. Bow to the king. Flaming. Oh, yes, that is an O at the end. And Miss Pajinski has to double check and make sure that she's going to spell flamingos right. So give me just one second. It's always a good idea to double check if you don't know how to spell anything or if you don't know how to spell something, you can just use your resources. Like I just Googled flamingos to see if it was O-E-S or if it was just O-S. Use your resources, friends, even teachers do. So it's just an S at the end, flamingos. Flamingos. All right, so we've got our first word, flamingos can. We know how to spell can. I can spell can. I can spell can. C-A-N. C-A-N. We need our finger space. C-A-N. Flamingos can. What's our next word? B. Yes. And how do we spell B? Pretty easy. We're going to do a finger space. And you know what? I don't know if I have enough room here. So I'm going to come down here and write the word B. And B is written B-E. 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 B is written B-E. B-E. B. Flamingos can be. And what did I say? What color? They can be red. But my flamingo is what? Pink. Yes, we know how to spell pink too, don't we? Pinky was a stinky pig. P-I-N-K, pink. So finger space. P-I-N-K. Let's go ahead and read our sentence and make sure we got it right. Flamingos can be pink. Well, that's a good little fact about them, isn't it? Is our sentence done? We have our capital. We have our finger spaces. What goes at the end? Hmm, are we asking someone something? Mm -mm. We're telling them something. So what goes at the end? A period. Perfect. All right, there's our sentence. There's our drawing. You get to color it now. Please color it. Add some background details. Let's see. Flamingos love to live in groups. They live in huge groups of flamingos. And guess what else they do? Sometimes in those groups, they dance together. So maybe you want to draw some extra flamingos back here for them so they can be buddies. Let's see, they live in um, shallow waters, so like lagoons and lakes, and they even live on islands. So maybe you want to draw some water here for it, maybe some cool palm trees, maybe some tall grass. 
had some cool background details, okay? Well, I hope you enjoyed this flamingo drawing. I think she turned out pretty cute. Jordan, I hope you had lots of fun with it. Everybody else, and Jordan included, please draw this and send it to me. I love your drawings. They make me so happy to see. Send it to me so I can see it, all right? I miss you all very, very much. I hope you're staying safe and you're getting to do something fun. I'm sending you all my love, all my hugs, and I will see you next time. Bye.